Okay, well, welcome to another episode of This Week with Drew. This is for Thursday, December 12th, and my friggin' battery on my camera died. So we're going old school, man. Audio-only podcast. Uh, yeah, hopefully fucking uh, you listen to it or like it. But anyways... Yo, let's start the show. Big Drew and the motherfucking audio. I got no video for my shit. The battery died and I'm out of luck in it. Sitting around doing no good is my camera. And I, oh, oh, the rapping is ending. Oh, hello. Hi. Welcome to another episode of This Week with Drew. This is for Thursday, December 12th, 2019. <laughs> Ooh, you push the fucking back box in the VLT. Hi, uh, uh, right off the top, I want to shout out my motherfucking Patreons, John, Greg, Isaac, Joel, Mike, Bryce, and the motherfucking Street Demons, and Brees, and motherfucking Tunde, and Marnus, and as always, my number one supporter, PG, and Calm, and Brothers Grimm. And any other motherfuckers from the hood, anybody else who watches this, or new people from Lethbridge, hello, um, uh, or new people that I've met on tour, how are you, how was my week? Okay, so last week I was fucking broadcasting to you from uh, Grand Prairie, and that was dope, man, we did two shows at the casino and they were fire, and then Thursday I had a little guest spot at a show for Scott Belford and... Uh, In Grand Prairie at a bar called Mad Hatter's and just fucking roasted that room. And then uh, Friday and Saturday, I was at the Boston Pizza in Dawson Creek, British Columbia. And I was driving up with Claire Belford, who was my opener this trip. And she was like, have you ever been here before? And I was like, no, I don't think I've ever. I can't remember being here in Dawson Creek before. And I uh, and then I drove in and I saw the Chances Casino and it all came flooding back to me that yes I had indeed been to Dawson Creek before and it did not go well. <laughs> I went there with Dan Clark and he just got absolutely wasted before the show and fucking just just doing crowd work for like twenty minutes and just pissed off all these old ladies. Like to be honest, the 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 show was set up for complete failure. It's a giant slot farm, man. Just all these far like just slots just laid out like a farm and then they put the little stage like in the corner but there's no like no partition to indicate that this is like the end of the casino and the start of the showroom it's just a little stage and then there's people like along the side of the wall in the corner that are gambling that don't have to pay there's no you know there's no way to hold the door there's nothing like that so we went there and uh, whatever it was a cold call too i think belford hooked up the number and then i fucking went there And yeah, Clark just ate a big dick doing drunken crowd work. And then I, and it's all people who are gambling anyways. Like it's just hostage, like surprise comedy. (laughs) Like if you're, there is something seriously wrong with you. If you're just out and then a comedy show starts and you're like, well, I guess I'm just doing this now. Like if I was out doing something and then I just, and then I didn't know. And then a comedy show just started, I would just leave. (laughs) I would be like, I didn't sign up for this. I don't want to be here. But fucking people are just like, it's so weird that some people are like, well, okay, well, I guess this is just what we're doing now. And then the comedian starts doing crowd work and then gets mad at you when you're not answering. It's like you're just eating dinner. (laughs) And now it's like, well, my name is John and I'm a pipe fitter. Like what? (laughs) Like what the fuck? So yeah, ate a huge dick last time I was in Dawson Creek. And uh, but this time was much different. Because we were at the Boston Pizza, which honestly, on paper, sounds like a fucking horrible gig. You're going to go do the Boston Pizza in Dawson Creek? Like, buddy, that sounds horrible. But uh, it wasn't. (laughs) The lounge was set up in a semicircle with a bar in the corner. There's no pillars um, impeding the sight lines. And the guy put a stage with a spotlight and a mic stand and a mic and a curtain behind it. And honestly, I have played comedy clubs across this country that were worse than this Boston fucking pizza. And it's because the dude cares. Shout out to Chris at at the Boston Pizza in Dawson Creek. Because he actually likes comedy. He actually cares. And he set it up in, in a way that it's like, yo, if the fucking ceilings are low and the lights are off and the TVs are off, then buddy, we're going to smash it. So it was just, it was sick. And I swear to God, Friday was like one of the best. I was just in the zone, man. Like just fucking riffing and People were out there and I was pumping the podcast, which I'm kind of bummed now. I got to release an audio only version of it, but that's okay. Um, 
So then Friday was good, and then Saturday, all the shows went well for the whole week. Well, the Tuesday one in Grand Prairie was fucking hard because there was nobody in there, but I knew there's always one show that's a fucking stiffy, and then sure enough, Saturday crowd comes in, and they're a goddamn stiffy. But it was still good, like, it was still fine, but man, it's just every crowd gets the show that they deserve, you know? Like, fuck, if you're going to be a stiff audience, but oh, yo, the, <laughs> on Friday, I forgot, there was this bald fucking guy, and I swear to God, he was just sitting in the, right in the front, like, right in the front, he had his arms crossed, and he was looking ahead the whole time, he wasn't looking at the stage, he was just, like, looking straight across the table at his girlfriend the whole time with his arms crossed, and, like, whatever, like, I'm killing it, but it's, like, it's hard, man, like, it's hard to not focus on the fucking one guy who's not laughing you're like what the fuck is going on like this whole place is dying and you're just sitting here so it's like this it's almost distracting you know you're like so eventually i was like yo bro like are you a cop (laughs) because that's usually the people like because he was kind of muscly and he was bald and he was stoic and i'm like bro like usually it's fucking cops just hate me because i'm so joyful about smoking dope and they're like so mad that they can't do anything (laughs) Like, they just get so fucking choked, and cops hate me so much. Um, but it's mutual, man. Fuck the police. Motherfucking snake and mongoose. So then, whatever, I started ripping on this fucking guy, and then he tried to, like, get me back. And uh, I'm just like, are you a cop? He's like, I don't know. Are you a panhandler? Like, it's, like, indicating, like, trying to be like, oh, comedy is panhandling. And I was like, fucking right, so I'm a panhandler, bro. I'm making 200 bucks a minute right now. <laughs> It's like, yo, honestly, if you're at a comedy show and you're going to try to throw like a shot at a comedian, like all you have to realize is like you better real like you better have more than one ready to go because I've been doing this for fucking 11 years, buddy. Like I got a fucking you got one bullet in the chamber and I'm loaded up like Rambo with fucking clips ready to blam on you and you ain't think i never gone toe-to-toe with a fucking bald looking cop at the front row fuck buddy so i just started torching this guy (laughs) i honestly don't even remember what i was saying but everyone was like oh and i was like yo you think you could catch me motherfucker i'm out here every single night and whatever and then i kind of roasted him a bit and then i got back to the jokes and it was all good and then fucking he um he was still like not laughing or whatever and then i made a couple more remarks and i'm like i was like why is my joy not infectious to you sir and he just i don't know everyone was fucking and then finally i always wrap my headlining set with like 15 minutes of guitar playing so then for the fr- so i just picked up my guitar and i usually normally start with like these written songs but i just thought it'd be so funny to just not say anything and just start like singing about him and i was like bald knock man in the front row he's not laughing at my show and i just started singing this song about how, how wacky he was and i and as soon as i finished everybody started clapping and he put on his coat and he fucking stormed out <laughs> And it was right in the front row. Like everyone was looking at him because I was singing this song about him. And then I finished and he fucking put on his coat and he stormed out. And (coughs) oh man, it was so funny because earlier I had made a joke about like, I'm being like, you're going to beat me up in the parking lot and he kind of gave like a oh, oh, yeah well we'll see about that and then he storms out and then and then someone was like oh he's waiting for you and i was like yo it's cool i just don't have to i'll just live here now like i don't have to leave boston pizza <laughs> if this scary narc man is fucking waiting for me like i'll just live here i'll sleep on a boston brute what the fuck's the problem just fucking fluff out a little bolognese and sleep on a on a pierogi uh, from the pierogi pizza <laughs> but everyone was like everyone was like oh and i was like yo i actually feel bad like i wasn't trying to like be mean to this guy but it's like yo like you can giggle man like there i wasn't like i'm funny i'm clean there's no reason to be mad and then his girlfriend was in the front and i'm like I talking to her and i'm like yo like what's like is he okay what's going on she's like he was just uncomfortable being in the front row and and there's just he just didn't want to and i think he was just like a super introverted guy and he just didn't like the fact that like everyone was looking at him and then i sang a whole song about him where the whole fucking like a hundred people are just looking at him and i'm singing about how much of a prick he is i feel bad now oh man and then he stormed out and then everyone was like oh it was it was kind of funny so yeah i fucking walked the guy i i haven't walked anybody in a long ass fucking time but i walked this guy 
Oh, got some nice red rose going here. Yo, this reminds me of old school this week with Drew. I don't know if anybody's been listening since the first inception of this podcast in like 2010, but I used to just lay on my bed and just fucking yell into the microphone before I sat in my chair and yelled into the into the fucking uh, camera. But here I am now, man. Um. Okay, good. So that was how was my week, and then I came back from Lethbridge. Oh, and then I came back from Lethbridge, and fucking uh, Sunday I was at Empress, and that was sick. Re- regular Edmonton room. Stopped off at the my old stomping grounds, the Druid. Man, saw Goitz. Fuck, bro. The manager of the Druid, now Urban Tavern, whatever, this bar in Edmonton. He was there, and I was there when I first started, too. It was crazy. It was like Benjamin Button. Like, here we are 10 years later standing in the exact same place on Earth doing the exact same fucking thing. It's like, does anything really ever change? I don't know. Fuck. Because it's like me and this guy, and we worked together 10 years ago, and here we are working together 10 years later doing the exact same fucking thing. <sighs> I don't know. I guess things change, but it was kind of trippy to like just think about. It's like fuck, man. Like I'm like Doctor Manhattan. Yo, I've been watching The Watchmen on on HBO. If you haven't watched The Watchmen on HBO on Crave, buddy, this show is fucking crazy. If you're a fan of the original twelve editions of The Watchmen or the compilation graphic novel, this thing is like. It's real tight, man. Like it does not. It's 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 a unique and original while still maintaining the universe. And Dr. Manhattan is fucking, he looked kind of weird when they did the reveal, but fuck, man, it's a pretty sick show. Um, I've been watching that, and I also watched Survivor, bro. I've been watching Survivor again, and uh, they ejected this guy for being a fucking creepy Me Too toucher, this fucking guy. He got a warning. He's the first guy to ever be ejected from Survivor in 39 seasons. But he was creeping on some of the girls at night. He was like snuggling up on them and gripping them up and stuff to the point where they brought it up and they're like, "Hey, yo, this is your official warning." And then apparently at the end of the episode, fucking last night, they just showed some like black card, like title card. It was like Dan was removed from the episode after another incident occurred with a not a not a cast member and off camera. So this guy was creeping on like the microphone lady or the sound like camera lady or the fucking one of the producers or something just can't stop these old guys are just stuck in their fucking ways and they literally don't even see anything wrong with it like grabbing your shoulder or gripping you up or fucking touching your hair like unconsenting they literally because their uh, their uh, view of the world is so objectified like everything is an object to them so they're like well what i'm just fucking glad you had a little fucking hair i huh? give give you a little fucking pat on the ass like they truly don't see anything wrong with it and it's so fucking good that these dudes are on their way out man because like it's so uncomfortable it's probably prevented so many talented people from fucking rising up because of uh you know they're scared of the implications right now and it's good that these dudes are not getting away with it anymore and they got to be put on fucking notice and i think they definitely are and like it must be so hard for some creepy old pre-2 guy to fucking get a new assistant and he's like ah back in the day i used to just and now he has to be like treat her like a person (laughs) and he's like so choked (laughs) these guys don't even fucking get it man So, yeah, he got ejected for the first guy ever for just fucking gripping up. Who knows what he did? But, um, yeah, pretty crazy, man. That's my big news with Drew right there is fucking Survivor Dan got kicked off. And uh, The Watchmen is crazy on HBO. And I went to Banff. That's the last thing I'm going to talk about is I went to Sunshine Village with the motherfucking boys. And Mink, my one of my best friends from high school or from fucking forever, actually, <laughs> is so gnarly. This guy did a front flip on the first day and fucking broke his board and fucked himself up so he couldn't come the second day, which was uh, sad, man. But, uh, you know, you got to fucking go on. And then me and uh, my buddy Los, also one of my best friends from Ref Forever, is a skier now. He's converted. I got him from fucking... Well, he did it himself, but man, boarding is just so bad. It's so hard for you, man. Like, it's just hard on your body. So he's a skier, and then we just fucking shredded, like, two skiers just out there, just ripping, man. Holy fuck. It was awesome, man. Being back in the mountains just makes you feel like... And, bro, like, don't make the mistake of looking at real estate. If you live in fucking Toronto and you start looking at real estate prices in the mountains, you're like, why the fuck would I buy an 800-square-foot condo for a million dollars 
when I can buy a fucking 1,500 square foot house for $500,000 in Banff. Like, oh my God, man. I just want to live in the fucking mountains and just have a beard and eat beef jerky and go skiing. <laughs> Fuck, man. <coughs> um, okay, well, yo, sick. Uh, this has been, uh, the audio version of this week with Drew for this week. And then next week I'm back and I left my fucking battery charger in Toronto. So we'll run her back again. I'm anticipating very low engagement on this episode, but that's okay. Uh, thank you for, if you listen to the end as always, yo, I'm in Edmonton for another couple days. So hit me up if you want to hang out or if anybody's from Edmonton, you want to fucking chill, uh, hit a brother up. Okay, fucking A, shacking, 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 shacking,